Hi, I'm Dr. Julie Steinauer, and in this segment of Ask Dr. Julie, let's talk about a condition that we're hearing an awful lot about. Patients are contacting our clinic asking us, do we treat the condition of nystagmus? And the answer is yes. But what actually is nystagmus? How does it occur? Um, what causes it? And why are we successful in treating it? Well, so first of all, nystagmus is an involuntary eye movement where the eye itself moves and the person cannot consciously stop and control it. It may move side to side. It might move up and down. It might even move in a circular pattern like this. So if you look at someone and you're like, wow, their eyes are just like wiggling nonstop. And it's not like you see them shifting and looking side to side or they're uncomfortable and they're moving their eyes around. This is something that's kind of like a fast movement usually um, or a very specific pattern of movement like that. Um, so why on earth do we get it? Well, let's talk about that in a minute. Let's actually discuss the kind of like the classifications of it. So one is congenital, which means that we have it from birth or shortly thereafter. One is manifest. Manifest means it's there all the time. If it's latent, it means that you only notice it maybe in like a specific position of the eye. So for instance, if someone looks off to the right and you're like, oh, wow, when they looked off to the right, their eye was like, whoa, I didn't, I don't ever see that or if they kind of cover an eye and all of a sudden the eye moves. Um, but manifest latent means it's there all the time, but it is worsened when you cover an eye. And then acquired is a condition in which it comes on as a result of something else. So later on in life, we can acquire nystagmus. Now, um, if it's congenital, typically it's going to severely affect the person's eyesight because they're never going to have developed the ability to see things clearly, the eyes moving all the time, so they won't be able to learn how to kind of like stop and fixate on a particular item to be able to see it really nice and clear and focus in on it. And it's associated particularly with albinism. So if someone has um, the condition of albinism or is an albino, which means they don't have as much pigment in their body, then oftentimes they will have congenital nystagmus as well. But again, we know there are other forms of nystagmus which can develop um, later on, so it can be acquired. So what are some conditions or how is it acquired? Well, um, we can get nystagmus from a head injury. Um, we can get nystagmus from certain um, neurological conditions like a Gillian bar or uh, multiple sclerosis. We can develop it if we have a strabismus or an eye turn. Um, uh, we can develop it from, um, well, well, genetics, we know that. It can be associated with a vestibular problem. So an inner ear problem can actually cause a nystagmus. So there's an ocular versus one that's associated with vestibular type of nystagmus. Um, other things, I'm kind of looking at some notes here because I want to make sure I don't forget them. One that's super important, um, obviously, is if you have an acquired nystagmus, it's important to rule out the possibility of a brain tumor because that is something that can cause an acquired nystagmus. We also can see nystagmus come up as an in acquired position or a circumstance with something like medications that you take. And then the other one that I think is probably, let me make sure I'm not missing any big ones. The other one that I think is really big that I see these days is um, acquired nystagmus nystagmus associated with vaccinations. And so we're seeing quite a lot of those. So that's kind of some of the causes. We talked about like the different types. We talked about the different causes. Um, now let's talk about what nystagmus can cause itself. So as a result of this movement of the eye, where it's kind of swinging back and forth like this, sometimes again, kind of more like a circular pattern, sometimes an up and up up and down beat pattern, but the most common one is the side to side pattern. Um, we obviously will have problems with eyesight. They will have a difficult time stopping to fixate, particularly if it's a manifest um, type of nystagmus, which is there all the time. The latent nystagmus, um, remember that's the one where you like you cover an eye or they might look in one particular position and it kind of shows up more But if it's there nonstop like woo every time their eyes are open their eyes are moving like this and they can't stay in still Well, then that will cause some problems with focusing in to see things clearly So our eyesight will be degraded as a result of that It also causes or is associated with maybe it's not the cause but it's definitely associated with a lot of binocular or two-eyed vision problems so people who have nystagmus often have something like a strabismus. They often have issues with 
um, tracking. They often have, well, if you think about it, because their eyes moving a lot, they may have difficulty following objects clearly, especially if they don't see very well, but their eyes in motion all the time. So for them to kind of track an object is very, very difficult. Um, so you may definitely notice that nystagmus is associated with a lot of uncoordination or problems with being graceful. Definitely these are people who are not going to be sports playing individuals because they won't have great eye-hand coordination. It will be too severely affected. Um, and uh, I think that those are the biggest things. Certainly there are lots of other things that we could come into, you know, kind of mention and come into play here. I guess maybe another one that would be very, very noteworthy would be dizziness. So a feeling of being dizzy, especially if that's related to like the inner ear and the vestibular system. So there's lots of causes of nystagmus potentially. There are several different types of nystagmus. And now um, we know what they can cause, like what does nystagmus affect? Right? So it affects our ability to focus, our ability to see clearly, our ability to use our two eyes together as a team, our ability to be coordinated, um, and maybe even like the feelings of dizziness and motion sickness feeling. But now let's talk about like what do we do for it? So what do you actually do for nystagmus? Can you do anything at all? Well, you can. There's actually some forms of treatment for nystagmus that are pretty phenomenal. Our clinic actually has tremendous success with this. We've worked with a lot of nystagmus patients over the years that have it for a multitude of different reasons. Um, so pretty much any of the ones that we've mentioned here as far as like congenital manifest latent, manifest latent, or acquired, we've worked with all of those throughout the years. And so there are... Um, you know, quite a few things that you can do actually. But one of the things that's most beneficial is to put that individual through a course of syntonic or photosyntonic light therapy. Now this actually, if we're treating the brain like a brain injury, will actually slow down and sometimes get rid of the nystagmus by as much as 80 to 90 percent. And it even can decrease in some cases to where you might have a manifest, which is there all the time, and it might decrease down to a latent, where it just shows up if you cover an eye. Wow, what a difference that makes in people's lives. To get rid of that constant motion, and to take it just down to like, oh, it only shows up if I look in an extreme area, <laughs> or if I cover up an eye, right? So um, we are able to help them improve their level of eyesight and their ability to focus. And obviously, uh, we look at the binocular vision or the two-eyed vision problems, and we're able to treat that aspect as well, teaching them how to align and use their two eyes together so they're not crossing or maybe going out in an exo or ex, um, what we call exotropia pattern. Um, and if there's any vertical up and down um, tropias or strabismus, um, then we can correct those things too. So there's actually an awful lot surrounding nystagmus. It's a very interesting condition. We see a lot of it acquired these days associated to medications and vaccinations. Um, and uh, I think, I think this is really good information because we're going to see it more and more. I see more nystagmus patients now than I've ever seen in my entire career before in all of my 19 years. And I probably see, I don't know, 10 to 15 patients a year now as nystagmus, which before I might get one person a year, excuse me, a year. So it's, it's significantly changed. And uh, I think that we're going to continue to see more of it. So now if you have nystagmus, or you know someone who does, then contact our clinic, especially if you're local, call us at 618-288-1489. But if you're not local and you're thinking, well, how can I work with you? No one's ever talked about this before. Go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com and fill out the questionnaire for us. And that will kind of get you in the loop and pattern of us connecting back with you to talk about how we can help you with your nystagmus. It's not correctable to the point where it will just totally and completely go away. Usually. Sometimes it is. Most of the time, though, we're looking at improving it anywhere from around 80 to 90 percent, and that is phenomenal. So again, contact us or go to our website and fill out that questionnaire and see how we can help you. And with that, I'm going to say thanks for tuning in to this segment of Dr. Julie or Ask Dr. Julie, and we'll see you the next time. Thank you.